Take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Matthew. Turn to the book of Matthew and let's read Matthew chapter 12. Now this morning I'm going to preach on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 12 and let's pick up verse, read verse 40, which is my text this morning. Matthew 12, 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall a son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you bless the preaching of your precious book. Lord, make it clear, make it plain, and make it powerful. Father, to your people this morning, in Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Uh, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking about his resurrection and coming out of the grave. He said, Jonah was three days in there, and he was three nights in there, and I'm going to be three days, and I'm going to be three nights in there, and I'm going to come up out of that grave. You know, this morning, this is an Easter morning, and you know one of the main things about it is Jesus Christ come up from the grave. You know what makes our religion different than any religion in the world? And, of course, i got a religion just like everybody else, but salvation, now don't miscuse, mistake religion with salvation, but I have Jesus Christ. But you know what makes Christianity different than Mohammedism? Jesus Christ come up from the grave, Muhammad's still dead. You know what makes Christianity different from Buddhism? Buddha is still in the grave, Jesus Christ come up from the grave. Uh, one fellow told me one time, he said, Preacher, did anybody ever see Jesus when he come up out of the grave? Yes, he did. I want you to take your Bible for a minute and turn to the Gospel of John and turn to John chapter 20. In the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, and pick up John chapter 20, and let's read verse 11. And it says, And Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she uh, stepped down and looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the foot, and where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away the Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. She thought somebody come and stole the body and took it away and laid it somewhere else. Verse 14, And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Jesus. Standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Who was it? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the first persons to see the Lord Jesus Christ after he come up out of the grave was a woman. <laughs> Isn't that something? Lord says, I'm going to show myself to a woman. First one I'm going to show it to. Why did he show himself to the disciples first? You ever thought about that? <laughs> no, he says, I'm going to show it to that woman. I'm going to show it to her. So he takes Mary and says, Mary, here I am, and shows himself to her. All right, take your Bibles again and turn and look at verse 19 in the same chapter. Verse 19 says, Then the same day at evening before the first day of the week, when the door was shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus. Came who? Jesus. And stood in the midst of, said to them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. That's ten of them. Ten of them. So a woman, she shows up, and Jesus shows himself to her. Then ten men show up in there, and Jesus shows himself to the ten men. Ten of them. Hey, man, if ten men saw him, don't you believe the ten men? I mean, if Brother Bunyan and uh, 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 ten guys... <laughs> stood up and said, I saw him. Wouldn't you believe it? Why, in a court of, in a court of law, one fellow has to stand up and say, I saw him. If ten of us stood up and said, we saw him, we saw him. Amen? I'm talking about something that happened today. <laughs> well, the ten disciples saw him. Now take your Bibles and look in the same passage and look at uh, verse 27 in the same passage. 
Then said he unto Thomas, I reach hither thy finger, and hold thy, behold my hand, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it in my side, and be, and be not, uh, not faith, uh, faithless, but believe. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Oh, doubting Thomas, he finally believes. Now, Jesus come along and says, oh, You don't believe it's me, do you, Thomas? You don't think this is me, do you, Thomas? And Thomas is kind of shaking there a little bit, so I don't know if that's you or not, Lord. And Lord says, Take your finger and come over here and stick it in the hole in my hand where the nail is at. And stick the other finger in this hole where the nail's at. And here, right under my side, right over here, there's a hole here where they stuck the spear. Put your hand right in there, Thomas. And about that time, Thomas falls down on his hands and knees and sticks his hands up like that and said, My Lord and my God. Why, Thomas, son. Thomas, son. That makes 11 of them. All right, and the woman. Now take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians. And I'm not, I haven't got time this morning to show you all the people that saw him, but I'm going to show you the great number. Now take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians. Now if I took all my time this morning to show you all the people that are in the Bible that saw him come up, I wouldn't have time to finish before the service is over this morning. But I'm going to skip all those and I'm going to show you a main group. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians. I don't want you to think that I'm going to pull a wool over your eyes this morning. He came up! And I'm going to show you why it's important you believe that. I right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and let's pick up verse 5. And it says, And that he was seen of Cephas. That's Simon Peter. Simon Peter saw him. Then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen of about five hundred brethren at what? Once. Once. I mean, 500 people. All 500 people seem at the same time. Brother, that's pretty good. Wouldn't you think the man come up out of the grave if all 500 men saw him at the same time? He came up. He came up. All right. 500 people saw him at once. And when the great uh, portion remaineth unto this present... All right, there's a whole bunch of them still alive when Paul writes that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But some are fallen asleep. Some of that 500 are dead. Verse 7, after that, he was seen of James. That's James, the Lord's brother. He even saw him. You know why he appeared to James, don't you? He had all his brothers, and some of the brothers didn't believe on him. But he said, I'll appear to James. That's one brother that believes on me, so I'm going to appear to him. And show him that I came up. So he prayed to his own brother, James, and showed him that he come up out of that grave. All right. And a scene of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Paul, where did Paul see him? Paul saw him on the road to Damascus as he got saved going up to kill a bunch of Christians. Now tell me something. If 500 men see him at one time, the 12 disciples see him, and James see him, and Peter sees him, and Paul see him, wouldn't you think he'd come up? Amen. Amen. He came up. You know what some folks believe in this town? Some folks believe he just come up spiritually. I mean, I'm talking about religious people. Now, I won't name the denomination. Somebody say, you're criticizing religion again. But they believe... Yeah, I'll say it. The Jehovah's Witness believe Jesus Christ come up from grave spiritually and his body's still there. You know what I believe? I believe he came up in body. And you know something? If you don't believe he come up in body, you know where you're at? You're still in your sins. Part of salvation. The Bible says believe that Jesus Christ was buried in a grave for three days and three nights and believe that he arose from the grave. You know what we are? We believe Jesus Christ come up from the grave. If I don't believe that, then you're not like us. You're not one of us, because we believe it. Amen? amen? Everybody believes that. Say amen. amen. That's the truth. That's the truth. All right, now take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Now this morning, I want to give you a little bit of meat this morning. Many times we have, uh, we have kind of some milk of the Word, and I kind of preach to you kind of the milk, 
But this morning I'm going to get you in some meat, so uh, come on, set the plate out in front of you and get your juicy knife and your juicy knife, your steak knife. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to give you some meat this morning, and so you're going to get fed this morning some meat of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 12, and let's pick up verse 40. And it says, As therefore, Matthew 12, 40, uh, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. All right. Now take your, uh, the, did it say the whale's belly? You know what I got in the habit of saying? I call it the, the bell's welly <laughs> for some reason or another. I'll be screaming down through here and I'll say the bell's welly. <laughs> the bell's welly, the whale's belly. And I'll find another thing and mess me up. I'm forever saying that thing wrong. But was it a whale? Said it was a whale. Somebody says, well, I don't believe a whale could swallow a man. And how do you know a man could live in a, bell's, a, a whale's belly for three and a half days and three and a half nights? You know why I know it? Because God said so. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Genesis and turn to Genesis chapter 1. And let's pick up verse 21. Now watch this. Genesis 1, 21. And it says, and God created what? Ah, there it is, Genesis chapter 1, the first book in your Bible, said God created a great what? Whale, whale, whale. You believe that, preacher? I believe a whale swallowed Jonah. Why, God created him in Genesis chapter 1. Why, if he created whales, brother, that's no problem with me. Swim around there and swallow up Jonah. A whale swallowed him up. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Good Friday. Good Friday. Nothing, man. He couldn't have died on Friday if he's going to be three days in the, on the belly of the whale and three nights there. There's no such thing as Good Friday. You know what it is? It's Bad Wednesday. You say, why Bad Wednesday? They crucified my Savior. You say he had to die. Yeah, but the Jews didn't have to crucify him, and neither did the Roman soldiers have to crucify him. He could have just went up there and died himself. He could have just went up there, died, said, I'll die with these other thieves, and I'll take all the sins of the world on him. No one had to crucify him, but somebody crucified him. I right, looky here. I'll take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John. Turn to John chapter 11 and look at verse 9. John chapter 11. And look at verse 9 this morning. Now turn to the verse. I trust you have your Bibles with you this morning. How many of you got a Bible with you this morning? Raise your Bible up. Take your Bible and stick it up in the air. Got your Bible? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Turn to John chapter 11. Look at verse 9 this morning. John 11, 9. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? Underline that. Twelve hours in the day? Twelve hours? Now, what do us Romans have? We have 24 hours in a day. But you know what those Jews have? Those Jews have 12 hours in a day and 12 hours in a night. So Jesus spent three days in the grave and three nights in the grave. So when Jesus Christ was crucified in the cross of Calvary, was it daytime or nighttime? Well, the sun went dark at, at noon, and it was for three hours it was pitch dark. But that was right in the middle of the day, at noon. What was it? It was Wednesday afternoon at 12 o'clock. And the sun goes dark, it's in the day. By 5 o'clock Wednesday night, Jesus Christ is getting ready to take it down. And they take him off of that cross, and they put him in a tomb. They put him in a, in a grave at 6 o'clock Saturday night. I mean Wednesday night. So there's 12 hours in the day. So that night Jesus Christ is in the grave... That would be Wednesday night. And then Thursday, he's in the grave. That's 12 hours. And then Thursday night, he's in the grave. That's Wednesday night and Thursday night. One day, that's Thursday in the grave. All right, he's Thursday night in the grave. That makes Wednesday night and Thursday night. One day, you follow me with me now? How many say with me? Say amen. All right, then that's Friday in the grave. That makes two days and two nights. He's Friday night in the grave. That makes how many nights? Three nights. Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. How many days? Two days. All right. So that's Thursday in the grave, Friday in the grave, Saturday in the grave. He gets three days and three nights. 
Now take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John and turn to John chapter 20. And notice that early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, the, they come to the grave and find the grave empty. John chapter 20, verse 1. And the first day of the week, come Mary Magdalene early, when it was dark. When it was dark, they come to the grave. You know what we have? All over this country we have Good Friday services. And Good Friday services. You know some, they got it all on the wrong day. <laughs> Isn't that a shame? They all have it on the wrong day. Poor folks. You know what's wrong? They don't believe the Bible. You'll say you have services on Wednesday. Well, if, if you're going to get technical about it, you ought to have at least on the right day. <laughs> Why? He's going to be three days and three nights. Why? Now take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 12 and look at it again. This is why. Matthew chapter 12 and look at verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the what, folks? Heart of the earth. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary, and the three days that he was buried, and the three nights that he was buried, where did he go? He went into the heart of the earth. Now take your Bibles and turn to the book of Jonah. Now let's see where he went. Turn over to the book of Jonah and let's see where the Lord Jesus Christ went. Now take your Bibles and turn to it. Now this is important because every unsaved man in the world should know exactly where hell is at. We're going to find out where hell is this morning. Turn to Jonah chapter 2, the book of Jonah. When you found Jonah, raise your hand. When you found Jonah, raise your hand. All right? Come on, folks. All you folks, turn to Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. All right? Find Jonah chapter 2. I want to show you where hell is at. Every unsaved man in this world ought to know where hell is at. Jonah chapter 2, two verse 1. Let's read uh, Jonah 1. Let's read the last verse in verse 17. Now the Lord hath prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cry by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And, I, and he heard me out of the belly of what? Hell. Why, you mean to tell me Jonah went to hell? What did it say, folks? What did it say? Uh, did it say hell? Then if Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of hell, if Jonah was there for three days and three nights, where did Christ have to be? He'd have to be where? Have to be in hell. So somewhere in the Bible, it must say that Jesus Christ went to hell. Take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 2 and let's find out where it is. Take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 2. Now I'm a Bible believer. I'm one of these crazy nuts that's classified as a Bible believer. And when the Bible says hell, I believe that it meant hell and it didn't mean something else. You know why I believe in hell? Because I believe that's where a lot of unsaved people are going. If they're not saved, they're going to go right straight to hell. I don't say anybody's going to Hades. I never will, and I never have, and nobody's going to Hades. Absolutely nobody, unless you're a Greek. <laughs> unless you're a Greek, if you're a Greek, you're going to Hades. <laughs> or unless you're a Hebrew, you're going to Sheol. <laughs> but I'm an Englishman, and so when a man dies without Jesus Christ, I say, going to hell. Amen? All right, now Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, let's pick up verse 29. Now let's read verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. That is, uh, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher was with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, David was a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn to, uh, sworn with an oath to him, 
that of the fruit of his loins, David's loins, according to the flesh, Christ come from David according to the flesh. He was from the seed of David. All right. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, the throne of David, raise up Christ from the dead. Verse 31. He seeing this before spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in what? Hell. Then what part of Jesus Christ went to hell? His soul. Not his body. His body is laying over here in the tomb. His body's laying flat on the tomb and it's laying there and a big rock is rolled in front of it. His body's there. Where's his soul? His soul, my friend, is in hell. You know why his soul is in hell? For me. For me. What? My sins. My sins. And yours. How many of you got a couple of nice, juicy, big old, fat, hobbly hobby sins? You got some? You know where they're at? They're in hell. You know why? Because that's where they belong. That's where you belong. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, then go ahead and keep your sin. Go ahead and keep it. Go ahead and keep it if you want it. If it's that nice and it's that enjoyable and you'd just rather have it than have Jesus Christ have it, go ahead and keep your sin. But then if you keep it, you've got to pay for it. He's done paid for mine. And he took him to hell. He said, preacher, you believe that? I believe with all my heart and mind and soul and I'm counting on it. I'm counting on. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, even so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Take your Bible and turn back to the book of Jonah again. Turn back to the book of Jonah. And Jonah chapter 2 verse 2 says, And out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me unto the deep in the midst of the seas. And so on. Now let's pick up verse 5. The water compassed me about even to the what? Soul. So in Jonah chapter 2 verse 5 it said, Even to the soul. Then you know some Jonah died too. Yep. No doubt about it. Jonah died too. And Christ died. He said, As Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, even so shall a son of man be three days and three nights in the, in the heart of the earth. My friend, Jesus Christ died and Jonah died, said even to the soul. All right. And, and death clothed me around about in reeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains and the earth with her bars. Now take the word bars right there and draw a line back up to the word hell in verse 2. Bars and how. You know what's are? There's some bars there. You know why hell is like a prison? Because it has gates on it. And it has bars to keep you in. And you won't ever get out if you die and go to hell. And the only man that's got the key is the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And notice that Jonah said that there were bars in hell. And Matthew chapter 16, and let's pick up verse uh, 18. Matthew 16, 18. And I say unto thee, that's Jesus Christ, Matthew 16, 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates, G-A-T-E-S, gates, of hell shall not prevail against it. You know what's down in hell? There's some gates down there. And you know what it takes to get through a gate? It takes a key to get through the gate. Then there's hell down underneath. Where's it at? It's right underneath my feet. It said as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly's well. There I go again. The belly's, the whale's belly. <laughs> Jesus Christ shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. All right? He did what? He went down in there. Jesus Christ took a set of keys with him, and he went down to hell, and he opened up that gate, took a key and opened up that gate. 
is how you know that. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation. Said the gates of hell. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 1. Look at verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. Christ was de died on the cross for my sins and yours. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He come up, he resurrected from the grave, and he is alive. Now underline it. And have the keys, plural, of hell and death. He got them right there, brother. Where's my keys? <laughs> mine, are, mine are gone. <laughs> I lost my keys. He has a set right there. I was going to jerk out my keys and show you my keys. He got a set of keys right there, and he takes that keys, and he went down and opened up that gate. When the Lord Jesus Christ died, and his body laid in that tomb, his soul took my sin upon him, and with his soul, he made a redemption for my sins and paid for all my sins. And then he carries them. And he carries them down into hell. And he takes a key and he opens up the gate of hell, opens up the gate and walks through that gate. Now, he's, that's where he's at. All right. And carried my sins down there. All right. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Hebrews. Turn to the book of Hebrews and turn to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. And let's pick up verse 28. Hebrews 9, 28. Watch it again. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Underline it. Bear the sins. Underline that. Bear the sins of many. Bear them. What do you do when you bear a sin? You pick it up and you carry it. You put it on your shoulder and you carry it. He took sin upon him, and he took that sin, and he carried it and put through the gate of hell and left my sin right there. See how you know that. Look at the rest of the verse. All right. To bear my... Let me ask you something. Do you believe Jesus Christ bore sin? How many believe what you're reading in front of you right now? Did it say bore sin? How many believe that? You believe that? All right. Now tell me something. Is it still on him? Now let's read the rest of the verse. All right. And bore the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. Now underline this. Without sin unto salvation. Without sin. No sin on him. Well, when he's going to come back again, he's going to come back again. When he comes, is he going to have sin on him? Is he going to have my sins on him? He said without sin. He ain't going to be on him. So when he comes back, they ain't going to be on him. No, where's that? When he died on the cross of Calvary and was crucified and nailed, he had him on him then. Where did he put him? Are my sins up in heaven with God the Father? How do you, you know sin ain't in heaven? Where is it at? The only place it can be is in hell. Where did he put him? You know where I believe Jesus Christ went? He went right straight to hell and took my sins there and left them and then went up to God the Father. All right. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Ephesians and turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to take two places. Ephesians chapter 4 and Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16 and Ephesians chapter 4. Two places in your Bible. Two places. I'm giving you, giving you some meat this morning and feed you a little bit of meat. Ephesians chapter 4 and Luke chapter 16. In Luke chapter 16 and Ephesians chapter 4. Luke chapter 16 and let's pick up verse uh, 21. Luke 16, 21. And... And designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dull came to lick his sores. And it come to pass that the beggar died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Where did the uh, beggar go? He went to Abraham's bosom. All right. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in what? Hell. Now the rich man goes to hell, and the beggar went to Abraham's bosom. Why, where's that at? That's before the cross of Calvary. Now let's read on. All right, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, 
and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then the rich man who was in hell could see who? The beggar and Abraham. Why, in the Old Testament, when a man died, he went into the earth whether he was saved or whether he was lost. So the Old Testament saint went into the heart of the earth, and he was on one side, and in between him was a great gulf fixed in between that nobody could get across. He was in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man was in hell burning with the flames of fire. But he could look over there and see Abraham and the poor man. You know where that's at? Right in the heart of the earth. Where's that at? In the Old Testament. So, not only did Jesus Christ go to hell when he died, he went somewhere else. Now take your Bible and turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Now folks, I've believed this for 25 years. I've been preaching this for 25 years. You say you believe what you're preaching? I believe exactly what I'm preaching. Just as I'm preaching it right here. Ephesians chapter 4 and look at verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high. He ascended up on high. What did Jesus say to Mary after he had come out of the garden and was standing outside the tomb? He said to Mary, touch me not, for I have not yet a what? Ascended unto the Father. Now you know what's going to happen right about now? He's going to ascend to the Father. Verse 8. Wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, now underline it, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. You know what he did? He took all those Old Testament saints that had died that were in Abraham's bosom and carried them and took them to the third heaven. And while he was in hell, he passed that gulf and come across to the side and say, let's go. And he took them all to heaven and the place is now empty and the Old Testament saints now are up in heaven. They're not underneath your feet. They ain't underneath your feet anymore. In the Old Testament before the cross, they were underneath your feet just like the folks in hell are underneath your feet tonight. Not anymore. Now they're up in the third heaven. Say, preacher, you believe that? I believe just sure as I'm standing right here. You say, what good does that do me? You know you're not going in that dirt when you die. When you die, you're going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord in the third heaven. The Bible says to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. And my friend, no matter what your state is, if you're saved and born again, you're going to heaven with Jesus Christ. You've got something to look forward to when you die. Man, you got something to shout about when you die. Why? You're going to be absent from the body and present with Jesus Christ. Chapter 3. I want to give you one more before I conclude my message this morning. 1 Peter chapter 3 and look at verse 18. 1 Peter 3, 18. I'm giving you some meat of the word this morning. And I trust that you'll write down some of these passages and meditate upon them and pray upon them and ask God to reveal them to you. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. And it says, uh, not, not First Peter, I wanted uh, uh, First Peter, yeah, that is right. First Peter 3, 18. For Christ also hath once Suffered for what? Sins. Sins. The just for the unjust. Who's the just? Alright, he's the, he's the just one. For the what? Who's the unjust? Me. Brother, me. I'm the unjust. Then who did Jesus Christ die for? He died for sinners. One time I had a fellow and he said he's not a sinner. I said, if you're not a sinner, Jesus didn't Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ didn't die for you because he died for sinners. Amen? I'm a sinner. He died for me. All right? Uh, the just for the unjust. All right? The rest of the verse. Uh, uh, boy, I, I, that, came, that page keeps flipping on me. All right? The just for the unjust, did he might bring us unto God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now verse 19. Quickened by the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit. By which? By what? By the, by the Holy Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. The spirits in prison, that's not a man. Man is not a spirit. Angels are spirits, according to Hebrews. Angels are spirits. He went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Not only did he preach the spirits in prison, but he went to Abraham's bosom and took all the saints out of there and took them to heaven. You say, preacher, you believe all that? I believe everything I'm saying this morning. And you say, what does that have to do? When Christ come out of that grave, that's proof that he was God. That's proof that the sin had been paid for. That's proof that the job was done. My friend, he came up. And he's alive today, sitting on the right hand of the throne of God. I hope you believe that with all your heart and mind and soul this morning. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, you ought to make yourself a believer. You ought to say, I'm going to believe this morning. I haven't believed that until now, but I'm going to believe. And make yourself a believer in Jesus Christ today. You say, I'll do that. You've got to humble yourself. And become as a little child. And say, yes. I'll believe what the book says, and I'll start believing. You know what disbelief will do to you? It'll put you in hell. It'll put you in hell. You ought to become a believer this morning. How many Christians this morning say, Preacher, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Say, you raise your hand and say, Amen. amen. All right, there's a good testimony. You can't beat that. All eye closed and all heads bowed. All eyes closed and all heads bowed this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you've heard about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You heard that He come up. You heard that He rose. And you've been preachers of priests out for years and years and years, but you've never made it personal in your own heart and life and soul. You need to make it personal. Christ does you no good until you make Him personal, your personal Savior. Have you been born again? Where was you born again? When was you born again? How was you born again? You say, Preacher, I've been baptized. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You say, Preacher, I go to church. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you coming to know Jesus Christ because He died for your sins on the cross of Calvary. He was crucified. He was nailed. And three days and three nights, He took my sin and took Him to hell and left Him there. And then he come up out of grave and come up out of hell and went to heaven and took all the Old Testament saints there with him. And one of these days he's going to come back and get me and take me to heaven with him. But you're not going to go if you're not saved and born again. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll die and you'll go to hell without him. Is there anybody here this morning, sir, preacher? I don't believe I'm really saved. I don't believe I'm really saved. But I'd like to be. Would you pray for me? Would you just raise your hand this morning and say, Preacher, I don't believe I'm really saved, but I'd like to be. Would you pray for me that I'd really be saved? Well, you just put your hand up and put it right back down again. Thank you. Amen. Is there another? Is there another? Say, Preacher, I don't believe I'm really saved, but I'd like to be. Pray for me. Will you just put your hand up and put it right back down again? Is there another? Is there another here this morning? Is there another? Say, I don't believe I'm really saved. All right. Thank you. Is there another? Just put your hand up and put it right back down again. Say, I don't believe I'm really saved, but I'd like to be. Pray for me. Is there another this morning? Is there another? Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning for the hand that was raised. I pray that you'd speak unto their heart and speak unto their mind, Father. And Lord, I pray that you'd show them that without your Son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior, Lord, I pray you'd show them that they will go to hell, Father. And Lord, help them. Help them very soon, Father. Help them today, Father. Not next year, not next month, but Lord, today. Very soon, Father, help them to make the decision to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Lord, help them not to put him off anymore, Father. May today be that day that they come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Lord, help them not to listen to the devil's lie. Lord, speak to them. Lord, show them their true condition, Father. 
Lord, help them not to reject the inner hunger, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, you Christians here this morning, with all eyes closed and all heads bowed, you Christians here this morning, you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? How many of you raise your hands? You Christians say, I save and I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now you Christians, if you believe what you say you believe, Jesus Christ died to give you a fruitful Christian life and to make you fruitful for Jesus Christ. Are you a fruitful Christian? Are you bearing fruit for him? He didn't die in vain. You should have the Christian life that would make the Lord Jesus Christ pleased and happy with you. Maybe there's a Christian here this morning, Sir Preacher. I'm out of fellowship with the Lord. I know I'm saved, but I know I'm out of fellowship with Him, and I want you to pray for me this morning. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? Just put your hand up and bring it right back down again. Is there a Christian like that, Sir Preacher? Amen? 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 Is there another? Say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know I am but I'm out of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray for me? Just put your hand up and put it right back down again. Say, Preacher, pray for me. I know I'm out of fellowship, but I know I shouldn't be. Pray that God will help me do what I need to do. Would you just put your hand up and put it back down again? Is there another? Amen? Is there another? Amen? Is there another? Is there another this morning? Is there another? Amen? Amen? Is there another? One more. Is there any more Christians here this morning? Say, Preacher, I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning, these Christians that raised their hand, Lord, they know they're saved. They've received Jesus Christ as their Savior. But, Father, they're not doing the things that they know they ought to do, Father. I pray this morning that they would make a dedication in their heart to serve you more and to get back into fellowship with thee, Father, and get back into reading their Bible and get back into praying, Father, and get back into going to church and doing what they ought to do, Father. Just speak to their heart this morning and Lord, give them the grace to do that, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Take your hymn, Lord, and turn the page. 394. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. all heads bowed and Christians stand this morning and you raised your hand that you wanted to know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior you said you didn't believe you're saved now I want to give you a gospel invitation I want to give you a gospel invitation right now the invitation is if you will receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior will you just step out of your seat and come as we sing this next stanza would you step out of your seat and come down this aisle? He said, Preacher, I would like to be saved, but I'm afraid. My friend, the Christians in this building this morning are praying that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's nothing to be afraid of. Jesus Christ said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If Jesus Christ said that, he meant what he said. He'll save you if you'll come. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast cast out. You say, preacher, I'm a sinner. That's good. That's good. You've got the first step. You've got it made. Now just come, just like you are as a sinner, come and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you will receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today, would you step out of your seat and come on this next stanza? We have a man that will pray with you. We have a woman that will pray with you and open up the Bible and show you how to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Will you come right now? I'm not asking you to join the church. I'm not asking you to get baptized. I'm asking you to receive Jesus Christ. If you will, right now, will you step out of your seat and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? Will you come as we sing? All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. 
when you come to him just now, just like you are. The man that will pray with you and taking you back home, there's a woman that will pray with you and show you how to be saved. Would you come? Surrender all. I surrender all. all to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender all. Now you Christians here this morning, you Christians here this morning, maybe God spoke to your heart about some things in your life that you know shouldn't be there. Now's the time to begin. Now's the time to start. Maybe God spoke to you and you need to start and get off to a good start and start anew and start afresh with the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, I know Him as my Savior. Well, amen. Praise the Lord. Now you need to give your heart to Him and give your life to Him. Give Him your life, Christian. Give Him your life. You people that are here this morning, God has been good to you. God has been good to you. Now give God your life, will you? Will you just give it over to Him and turn it over to Him right now? I'm going to give you an invitation to come down to this old-fashioned altar and get some things settled with the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you've never been obedient to Him and followed Him in believer's baptism. Maybe you need to come. Maybe you're here this morning you'd like to be a member of the Bible Baptist Church. Maybe you need to come too. Let's, let's come. If God spoke to your heart this morning, you come. All to Jesus, I bless His name. All speak to Him. speak to Him. If you come to Jesus, He'll save you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. To receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yes. 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 He was baptized the Episcopal Church. He was baptized the Episcopal Church. But you've never received Christ as your Savior. All right. I want you to pray. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give a young man to show you from the scripture how you can make sure and how you can know you're saved. Dennis, would you go back and talk to him, show him about how he can know Jesus Christ as your Savior? All right. <clears throat> Will you come just like you are? Come to him right now. Be a Christian here this morning. You need to step out for him. Now's the time to get things set up. Go wait five, six years to get right with the Lord. Start right now. Start right now. Do it now. Will you step out for him? Come, give him your heart and give him your life and live for him. I surrender. I'm not going to drag the invitation on. I'm going to sing one more stanza. And if you don't come, we're going to close the service. But I want to urge you by my heart's desire this morning how important it is to turn your heart over to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, give Him your heart. Give Him what you love. Christian, give Him what you love. From the inside, down here. Down here. Make a commitment in your heart, Christian. Make a commitment in your heart. Maybe you're not saved and you didn't raise your hand this morning. You didn't put your hand up that you was lost. The man that did came. Now how about you? How about you? Would you say, I'll come to him right now? If you will, step out of your seat and come to Jesus Christ this morning. Will you come just like you are? You're a sinner and he'll accept you. If you'll come on this next stanza, you come. Christian, won't you do that? Brother Vern Bunye, will you ask the Lord to close our service in a word of prayer, please?